Best management practices for forestry operations are aimed at preventing water quality problems and minimizing environmental impacts. Sometimes the difference between successful BMP compliance and a violation comes down to accurately identifying a stream as perennial, intermittent, or ephemeral. Different BMPs apply to each stream type. Making the wrong call can result in leaving valuable timber, or worse, a water quality impact and possible enforcement action. Accurately identifying a stream requires close observation of a variety of indicators and good judgment to correctly apply the appropriate best management practices. Today, we're going to go over perennial, intermittent, and ephemeral streams and review some of the most important indicators of each stream type. Generally, perennial streams have flowing water most of the year, intermittent streams carry water for part of the year, and ephemeral streams flow only in response to precipitation. Since long-term monitoring of water flow is not practical, we use a variety of features to determine the stream type. The geomorphology, hydrology, and biology of a stream give us clues to the frequency, duration, and volume of water flow. No single indicator is completely reliable, so we need to look at as many factors as possible to make the best decision. The first thing to do is actually take a close look at the stream. In many cases, a quick assessment is all that's needed to make a determination. It's important to check as much of the stream length as feasible because stream conditions can vary widely. Be sure to think about how recent weather conditions and season can also affect the appearance of the stream. Sometimes changes in stream type occur with a gradual transition zone but changes can also be abrupt at points where two streams connect or there's a change in terrain. Be especially careful on stream sections where there is a change in type. Treat the transition zone as part of the higher stream type or contact your BMP Forester for additional help. Perennial streams have a well-defined channel that carry water for most of the normal year. Generally, this means there's flowing water at least 90% of the time, so a perennial stream can appear dry for five weeks out of the year. Since much of the southeast has been in drought for the past few years, it would not be unusual for a perennial stream to be dry for even longer than that. Such dry periods are the most difficult time to identify a perennial stream. Perennial streams typically have a well-defined stream channel and continuous banks. A firm and clean sandy or rocky stream bed is a good indicator for perennial streams because water flow is frequent enough to carry finer particles and wash away smaller debris like leaves and twigs. Intermittent streams have a well-defined channel that carries water seasonally or for only part of the year. It may flow as little as 20% to as much as 90% of the time. Guidelines for streamside management zones and other measures are often different for perennial and intermittent streams, so distinguishing between these types is especially important. Intermittent streams usually have well-defined channels, but since water flow is not as frequent, there will often be a fine layer of silt in the stream channel, and more small debris will also be present. On the lower end of the scale, you may find scattered upland plants and fine roots growing in the channel. Recent weather conditions can make a big difference in how an intermittent stream looks, so be sure to consider other indicators as well. Ephemeral streams flow only in response to precipitation or snow melt and may or may not have a well-defined channel. Generally, ephemeral streams flow less than 20% of the year during normal conditions. They do not show indicators of regular water flow and may have roots, leaves, and even vegetation in the channel. During forestry operations, problems can occur when ephemeral areas are not properly recognized. Here are some other indicators that can help you make the right decision. Remember that no single indicator can provide the answer, but these and other indicators should be considered together along with the site conditions, recent weather, and season.
Sinuosity is a measure of how curvy or winding a stream is. Normally, perennial streams have greater sinuosity with numerous bends and fewer straight sections than intermittent streams in the same conditions. However, sinuosity also tends to increase as the stream gradient becomes flatter, so consider the terrain when looking at this indicator. In-channel structures like riffles and pools are more apparent when a stream has frequent water flow. Depositional and erosional features also become more pronounced. Look for an active floodplain, bars, and benches. Sometimes you can see recent deposits of sediment on the floodplain from high water flows. A head cut is an abrupt vertical drop in the stream bed, almost like a small waterfall which marks active downcutting of the stream bit. If a head cut is stopped by a boulder, bedrock, or large roots, it is called grade control, which is more resistant to erosion. Take a look at the soil texture. In this ephemeral stream, there's very little difference between the soil in the stream channel and in the surrounding area. More frequent water flow will lead to channel downcutting and coarser sediment material within the channel. Also look for sediment sorting within the stream bed. In perennial streams, you should find coarser sediment in the deepest part of the channel and gravel bars, and fine sediments along the edges and in slower water areas. There are also many useful biological indicators of water flow. For example, fibrous roots of woody plants need oxygen. A strong network of fibrous roots may indicate the stream is dry for much of the growing season. You may find roots growing across ephemeral and intermittent channels, but rarely in perennial streams. Bivalves like mollusks and clams can only survive in water, so look for them in the stream and for empty shells on the banks. In most cases, fish are indicators of perennial streams. Crayfish are good indicators of a wet environment, but do not necessarily require perennial water flow. The larval stages of aquatic insects can also provide indicators of water flow. Some species, especially the mayfly, stonefly, and caddisfly groups, require perennial streams. Other species, such as amphipods, are more tolerant of conditions and do not require perennial water flow. Some types of algae and bacteria can indicate the presence of groundwater. Remember that ephemeral streams only carry storm runoff, so if you see the fluffy red growth, rust-colored stains, or the oily look of iron-oxidizing algae and bacteria along the edges or slower moving areas, there is a good chance you have at least an intermittent stream. Keep in mind that algae blooms can sometimes be an indicator of water quality impacts from organic debris and nutrients in the stream, or from additional sunlight reaching the stream if an appropriate buffer is not left. Algae blooms can also occur naturally, especially in the spring when water temperatures increase. Topo maps are a good resource for planning and normally show perennial streams as solid blue lines and intermittent streams as dashed lines. However, they're not accurate or reliable enough to replace a field visit. Other factors such as watershed size and stream order can also help with evaluation and planning, but will not conclusively indicate the stream type. Together, these indicators can help you evaluate the duration of water flow in a stream and properly apply the appropriate best management practices. Be sure to contact your state forestry agency if you need additional help with stream identification and protection. The local BMP or water quality forester will be happy to assist you. Make the right call when it comes to stream identification and you'll be well on your way to protecting our water resources.